I will spend about 10 to 15 minutes to wrap up everything about dials and pin junctions and we'll move forward with uh, BJTs. <clears throat> if, so for example, in the homework assignments, if I say that's the ideal dial, that means the IV curve looks like this. Ideal dial. IV curve for the ideal dial is this. So whenever there is a positive voltage drop across these two terminals, the dial becomes conductive. The so current flows through it. It's like perform like a wire. If I say it's an ideal doubt, with VB building voltage, then it looks like this. Here's VB. If I say it's a real doubt. With VB, but no reverse breakdown. Then it looks like this. Here is VB. No, 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 not not this part. Sorry, that's the uh, Zener. So be like this. Here's VB. What's the current here? IS. That's a reverse saturation current. Reverse bias saturation current. Keep in mind, you will see this in the homework. If I say it's a re real doubt with VB, which means there, there will be a VB, a building voltage, or you can consider this VB like a threshold voltage. It has to pass this VB in order to make the dial conductive. Right? So that's a um, little electric field formed by by what in a dial. So if you remember, remember that. Why do we got a VB in the dial? What's the name? So P and what's the name of this region here? Depletion region, right? And since you have plus here, minus here, so there's a little electric field. It's going to form a building voltage, right? which is a threshold voltage. I'm going to forward bias this guy. I'm going to make it conductive. It has to overcome this little building voltage because you can see that it's plus minus. It's opposite to this voltage potential direction. It has to overcome this in order to make it plus minus like this, like plus minus. Right, because the building voltage is plus minus from right to left. You want to make it right, left to right, to make it conductive. How the dial becomes conductive if you have a forward bias voltage like this? The depletion region becomes thinner and thinner. Right, when it's super thin, so the electrons can tunnel through this thin layer and reach this uh, castle terminal and form the current flows through the dial. Right. So that's uh, all these models for dials. What about Zener? I've heard about Zener dials. <clears throat> One more time. So what is IS? The reverse bias saturation current. From where to where? What's the direction of the IS? So there are two currents flow in the dial. Very simple model. What are these two dials? Uh, what are the two currents? Sorry, sorry for that. First, you got a ID. 
What is ID? Diffusion current? You need a quiz. Diffusion current because of the concentration gradient. So the holes are moving to the right side of the junction because of the concentration gradient, right, forms this little current. And I ask, it's a drift current, okay? And because, so, um, authentically, it's a reverse bias saturation current. If you have a voltage here, if you don't have voltage, that's a drift current, right? It's in the same direction as a reverse saturation current, reverse bias saturation current. So we just uh, denote this one as IS. We are not going to change it anymore in the future. So there are only two currents. This is a diffusion current. This is a drift current. In this situation, which is larger, which is smaller? Which one is larger? ID, because you have a, it's being forward biased. So there are more current getting into that direction, which is the same direction as ID. So ID is larger than S. But if you reverse bias it, the doubt is conductive or not conductive? Reverse bias, not conductive, right? Which is larger? I S. Little ID. Is it clear? Any questions? No? What about Zener dial? Zener dial. When you use the tools, sometimes as a voltage regulator, it's, uh, it is able to stabilize the voltage at a certain voltage level. So it's going to protect your circuit. If I say, hey, I got an ideal Zener dial, what that looks like, the IV curve. So here's the V, the direction of the V. If V is more positive, definitely it's going to be conductive like this. Right? Since it's an ideal Zener dial, so there's no VB. Whenever it's larger than zero, you've got a current flow through the dial. And because the Zener dial has a breakdown voltage, reverse breakdown voltage, it's not going to really break the dial. It's repeatable. It can do this back and forth. It's not going to damage the dial. You know, uh, because the fabrication process with the uh, Zener dial is a little bit different from the regular dial. If you reverse bias the, the regular dial with a pretty large voltage, it's, it's going to short the two terminals or just just break it make it open in the labs. Have I ever done this in the past? So because this guy, the, the regular dial is not made for this reverse breakdown. So whenever you have a negative voltage or being reversed, uh, this is being reverse biased. If the voltage is too high, it's gonna break it, it's gonna blow, blow this up, right? If you measure the voltage between these two terminals, will that be open or short? Normally it's short. It gets like a wire. But for the Zener dial, you can do this back and forth. So you can add a reverse voltage across these two terminals, make this voltage higher, and it's going to break down at this point. And whenever you increase the voltage, the reverse bias voltage further, it's not going to change the current anymore. It's going to um, stabilize the voltage of VZ. So you can pick up like VZ equals to 5 volts, 3 volts, any voltages, depends on the vendor or the data sheet of that uh, dial. So it's going to stabilize that voltage at a certain voltage level without breaking uh, all the other circuits uh, on the board. Right? If I'm saying, hey, this is a Zener dial, if it's an ideal Zener dial, 
essentially looks like this, the IV curve. Okay, if I say this is an uh, ideal zener dial, but with a VB here, the zener dial is still not dialed. So there should be a VB. Um, v, I, yes, this, okay? If I say this is a real zener, with VB definitely, because it's the real Zener dial, definitely has a VB. And um, yeah, just, just real Zener with, with the VB. Then it looks like this. Mm -hmm. There will be a little leakage. Of current here. It'll be stabilized at VZ. All right. Any questions on this? Gonna move forward. No questions? Great. And let's look at some examples really quick. This is an ideal, that's a real doubt. That's a real doubt. Definitely real doubt has a VB, right? And no reverse breakdown. Assume you cannot break it by applying a reverse voltage. So what's the IV curve looks like? If you increase V, here's I, no, sorry, VI and VO. If you increase VI, whenever it reaches 0 0.7 volts, the current will be drawn to the ground, by ground here. And the voltage is not going to change anymore. It's going to be stabilized at, v, at uh, 0 0.7 volts. So VO will be clipped at some point. And no reverse breakdown. So it's not going to break it down. So whenever, whatever the negative voltage of VI is, it's going to be transferred to VO because this is reverse biased and no current flows through it. So this equals to this. So that's why it's a linear line. But here, it's going to be clipped. It's not going to rise anymore and we'll stop here and this will be 0 0.7 volts which is a little built-in voltage over here because whenever this vi overcomes this built-in voltage you probably are wondering because this is p this is n so here it becomes plus minus so the building voltage is actually plus minus like this but why do i why did i label plus minus here like this. Yeah, that's a voltage drop across this, this style. Whenever it overcomes this voltage, there will be a 0 0.7 voltage drop across this uh, dial. So that's how that looks. So what about this? VI, VO, <clears throat> ground here. No, you don't want to ground here. Yeah, it's just floating. VI, VO, because if VI is positive, then it's a higher voltage, lower voltage. It's a reverse bias. Definitely no current flows through this dial. So whatever VI is, it's going to be transferred to VO. So whenever VI is positive, it's linear. 
And when VI becomes more a little bit more negative, uh, but before it reaches negative 0 0.7 volts, this especially is just for silicon, okay? For silicon, the building voltage is normally 0 0.7 volts. If VI is negative, it has to be at least 0 point, negative 0 0.7 volts in order to make this guy conduct. So the voltage is not going to change anymore. So whatever the negative voltage here is, it's going to be transferred to, v, uh, no, will be dropped across this dial and being stabilized at zero, uh, negative 0 0.7 volts. Okay. That's a dial terminal characteristics. Keep in mind, that's how that works. And one more example. If I have a circuit like this, VI, VO, so what that looks like. Yeah, for the ones who are not in my analog class, just keep in mind, remember, remember this. Whenever the voltage, whenever the real doubt is being conductive, like uh, forward biased, Whenever the current flows through it, it's going to have a 0 0.7 voltage drop. Just remember this. That makes things very, very easy. About here. So whenever VI is higher than 0 0.7, this becomes positive. This is always not a block. It's always open because it's blocking. It's reverse biased. It's blocking the current flows flows through this channel or this branch, right? So this, whenever it reaches 0 0.7, it's going to be clipped. So it will be stabilized at 0 0.7 volts. Same as the other direction, symmetric. Right? So whenever this is negative, and whenever it's lower than negative 0 0.7, it's not going to decrease anymore. Okay. So what about this? This is a little battery, which is plus minus five volts. Here's VI, here's VO. That's the direction of these two voltages. So when VI is getting more positive, it's getting larger and larger. It has to overcome this 5 volts first. Have to invert this 5 volts first. Or higher than it first. And then plus this little voltage drop over here, which is 0 0.7 volts. So it has to be something on top of 5 volts. That thing is 0 0.7 volts. It needs more than higher than 0 0.7 volts to overcome this guy. And then need another 5 volts to overcome this guy. So totally need a 5.7 volts to, to invert everything here to make it conductive. It's going to be clipped after that. Because you cannot change the 5 volts here. It's a battery voltage. The voltage drop between these two terminals will be permanently 5 volts. You cannot change it. But you are changing VI. Right, and you cannot change the voltage drop over here, which is 0 0.7 volts. Whenever it's conductive, there are just two batteries, totally 5.7 volts. You cannot change it. This is building voltage, this is a battery. Right, so whenever VI is higher than 5.7, it'll stop rising. What about the negative part here? The negative part will not will never make this branch conductive because this is it's gonna block everything. It's gonna block the current flows through this channel. So no matter what, it's gonna be a linear voltage. It's gonna be transferred to here. It's open circuit. Making sense? Okay.
this is a zener. So another zener. Vi. Vo. Remember, zener dials have reverse breakdown voltages, and it's stable. That's why we use it. The building voltage is still 0 0.7 volts. Okay. So there will be a little, uh, there will be a building voltage drop, which is 0 0.7 volts in that direction. And whenever this is being broken down, and there will be a VZ here, will be stabilized at VZ. So according to KVL, you have two batteries. So this voltage, VO, whenever it's going, whenever VI is getting more and more positive, right? So which means it's the voltage drop from here to here is getting higher. It's moving to the right side of the coordinate. I'm going to stop at what? I'm going to stop at where? VZ plus 0.7. Because it's symmetric, so if you invert the VI, it's going to do the similar thing. That's minus VZ plus 0 What about this? So twenty volts is just a voltage source like this. It's twenty volts battery. What's the direction of the voltage drop across the dial whenever it's becoming conductive? Plus minus, right? That's 0 0.7. According to KVL, you have a plus minus, plus minus. That's 20 volts. So if I increase VI, VO will stop rising at which voltage? And why? Hmm? 20 plus 0 0.7. Here's plus minus, plus minus. All right, two batteries. What about the negative direction? If VI is negative, if VI is ne negative, definitely you cannot trans uh, send current through the channel on the top because this is reverse biased. What about this guy? When VI is negative, this dial is actually a four best. So whenever, so when this will become conductive, when VI is negative, negative point seven. So here is zero point seven. Whenever this is zero point seven, it's going to stop getting more negative. So that's why this circuit can protect VO. If VO is voltage sensitive, cannot uh, handle anything higher than like 20, 20 something volts, they can use this circuit to protect the VO because you cannot control VI. You know, the angle is super dry. If there's an electric shock, it kind of goes up to like 20,000 volts. The power is low, so no current. The current is super low, tiny, like pickle amps or something. But this voltage can kill everything if you don't have this ESD protection circuit. So whenever this is too high, I'm going to stop at 20.7 for VO. It's not going further. And the same as 
this is going too low. Going too low is, is bad as well because whenever it's negative, because we know voltages are relative, right? Negative doesn't mean the voltage is low. <laughs> so, hey, negative 20,000 volts is low because it's lower than ground. You can try it. <laughs> right? It's high. Voltages are relative. Right. The last example for dials. VI, you have to discuss the different uh, situations for VI. Before we move forward with the details, let's look at this uh, the big picture of the, cir the circuit. Whenever VI is larger than 5, so the dials are ideal dials. No reverse breakdown, no VB. Okay, so when VI is larger than 5 volts, when VI is larger than 5 volts in the positive direction, what's going to happen? When VI is larger than 5 volts, you know, larger than 5 volts, which means VI is positive. When it's positive, th there's not no current flow into this, this branch, right, because it's blocking that voltage. Only this branch is working. The circuit becomes this. <clears throat> Ten K five volts. Ten K. Here's V O. If it is five volts, what is V O? Uh, larger than five volts. It's larger than five volts. No, we have five volts here. It must be a, a functional VI, right? That's VI plus minus. Just do a KVL. So if you start from here, the person start traveling. So you're just going to see a negative sign here first. So minus VI plus I times 10K plus is ideal doubt. It's just conductive, but nothing, just like a wire. And have plus minus for 5 volts. And plus minus for the 10k times i equals to zero. So you can calculate for i here and then calculate vo afterwards, right? What is i? Mm. So I times 20K equals to VI minus five. So I equals to VI minus five over 20K. So if you know I, VO is very easy to calculate. It just use VI, so VO equals to VI minus I times 10K. which is VI minus VI minus 5 over 2, which is 
we are over two times uh, minus or plus plus 2.5 all right any questions that's the first case when vi is larger than five so if vi is smaller than Uh, Ninety five. And only this branch is working. So you can flip it. All right? Just look at this branch. So the VI here from here to here has to be larger than five to make this branch work. As this will not work at all because this is gonna block. The current flows through here. If if the here is more positive than here, right? So whenever this voltage is lower than negative five volts, which means here to here is larger than five volts, this branch will be conductive. Or you can say when VI is negative more negative than negative five volts, you only have this branch. So whatever left here is this. Ten K, five volts, ten K. Here's VO, VI, same circuit, or similar circuit. Starting from here to here, it's traveling. So it's a, a negative VI plus I times ten K. Because this is negative, this is positive, positive, right? For this five volts battery, minus five volts, and plus <clears throat> I times 10K equals to zero. And it becomes I times 20K equals to VI plus five this time, not minus five. So I is VI plus five over 20K. And VO is VI minus I times 10K, which is VI minus VI plus 5 over 20K times 10K. Only two left, which is VI minus VI over 2 minus 5 over 2, which is VI over 2 minus 2.5, not plus. So that's VO. Whenever VI is more negative than five volts, uh, negative five volts, and the last case is when VI is smaller than five and larger than negative five, it's gonna happen. VO equals to what? <laughs> For this circuit. If VI is in between 5 and 95, what is VO? Is that VI? Why is that? No current through, through any branch, right? That makes sense? All right. It's not positive enough and it's not negative enough to make it conductive. All right, great. Quick overview of this. Any questions before we move to BJTs? No? BJTs are very easy to understand because it's just uh, like two pin, junc uh, pin junctions put together. And if you just read the textbook, not the CMOS textbook, but the textbook you used in analog. Um, is from Sadra, I think, and Smith. That uh, microelectronics tex textbook. <laughs> I didn't even mention like require you guys to buy this book. I mean, it's this book like it, it, that one hundred fifty dollars, and the CMOS book is like hundred something dollars, and the newer version is one hundred fifty dollars. 
And also the CMOS VI size is more than $100 as well. If you just buy all these books, it's going to be like $600. <laughs> Super expensive in the US. I mean, for my lifetime in school in China, I didn't even spend $600 for 12 years for the for all schools <laughs> from elementary school to college. It's way less than $600 for all the books. It's just a lot cheaper. Um, it's too much. But I think you, are, you guys are fine because right now you, got, you have internet, you can just Google whatever. If you, it's not clear enough, just Google it. Uh, and also just watch the videos and uh, look at notes. It should, be, it should be fine. All right, so BJTs. <clears throat> if, you, if you look at, the, if you read the book, you'll see like they always draw the PNG as a BJT uh, in, in like this, right? They are equal with n type p type n type but they never let you know what the real case looks like it's not like this it's thinner for the p junction and also the n junction here is way heavily dubbed compared to this n i'll let you know the reason for that so bjt stands for bipolar uh, bipolar junction transistors yeah and also it takes a lot of time to read the book to understand it it's just like trying to confuse you I don't know why this guy these authors are just trying to confuse you instead of uh, just actually understand this easily it's, it's really confusing so let me make it easy it actually looks like this okay and and P it's a lot, a little bit more uh, heavy, heavily uh, dubbed compared to this N, and this is really heavily dubbed, and we call this collector collector terminal, and this is the emitter. This is the base, and you have to forward bias for one of the three modes of operation, okay, which is most commonly used operation mode. You have to forward bias this little pin junction. So you can imagine there will be a little current flow through this, right? It has to overcome the VB in order to make it conductive. It's like a threshold voltage as what you have for CMOS. That's a B terminal, right? As a base. So VBE has to be larger than 0.7 volts to overcome this little building voltage in here. There will be a depletion region, right? That makes sense as a pin junction and because of this little current being injected into the base and this guy is highly dubbed and whenever you have a voltage like this being uh, is shorting the emitter to the collector if you do not have this base current what's going to happen just look at this pnp uh, npn junction if you only have this voltage but now the base voltage what's happening Ideally, if you do not have this P, it's going to be conductive, right? Because this is heavily dubbed. You have a lot of free electrons. That makes sense. It's like, a, you know, sil silicons are some conductors, right? When we are trying to modify the conductivity of the silicon, what we do? We dub it. You can dub it with boron or uh, phosphorus. So the n-type is definitely being doped with uh, phosphorus, but you have a lot of electrons, free electrons in there, so it's more conductive than a piece of silicon, right? So if you only if if you only have a voltage drop across these two terminals, is this going to be conductive or not? Not really. Why? That's a reverse bias doubt. It's not conductive. However, so so that's why you need a you need a transistor because it's performing like a switch, right? If you only have this voltage, it's not conductive. You need a switch to turn it on. So how you can turn it on? You just inject a little current in here. If you do not have the base voltage, this layer, this P layer, acts as 
an insulation uh, insulation layer. So no current flows through this channel, right? Or flows through this this device. If there's a little current flow through this injunction, we'll activate the current from here to here. And whenever a condition is satisfied, I'm going to cover that pretty soon. Whenever that condition is satisfied, there will be a, so all the electrons, free electrons here will be attracted. So this thin layer <coughs> will not be an insulation layer anymore because it's super thin. So all the electrons will be swept through this thin layer and arrive at this collector terminal. All the electrons is going to flow through here to here. That's why it's called emitter because it's emitting electrons. So the current flows through, uh, flows the current flows from where to where in that case, if that condition is satisfied. Collector to the emitter. So the symbol of this device looks like this. A space that's collector, that's emitter. That's why this little arrow is showing you because it's trying to label this terminal to show that this is emitter. Whenever you see an arrow here, it's a meter. The current flows through here, from here to here, whenever you have an IB. And that operation mode is called active mode in BJTs. So it actually looks like this. So all the ice IB curves. Here's VCE, the voltage across C and E. That's, VB, that's VBE. So we're looking at VCE, and here's IC, which is a current getting to the collector terminal. It's very similar to the CMOS IV curve, but they have different names for the different regions. This still cut off, still cut off to name this not conductive region. And here, the name here, is saturation and it's not desired. <laughs> in, in CMOS, we hope it op being operated in saturation and here normally is saturation, but in BJT, here is called saturation and here is called active region or active mode. <clears throat> and because this is not perfectly flat, so you have different curves that depends on what IB. You have a higher IB, you have a higher IC. And this is not perfectly flat. So if you draw it backwards and you are going to have an intersection with the X axis and the voltage here, at this intersection is called VA. Remember what's the name of this, this effect? So in CMOS, we have the similar effect. And what's the name of that one? And what's the cost of that one? Remember. No, no, no. So we're going to have a quiz pretty soon, OK, for all these spin junctions, body effect, early effect, channel width modulation, keep in mind some point next week, All right? So this is called early effect. And early is the last name of the person who discovered this, all right? And the same effect in CMOS, people also call it early effect. But, you know, the more professional name for that is channel lens modulation. Channel lens or CLM. So, what is the cost of the channel lens modulation and what's the cost of early effect in BJTs? And which came first? Which was dis discovered first? Just a quick common sense. 
So which one was discovered first in human history? <laughs> which one? Which one? Which one? BGTs, because this came first, right? People invented this one first, then CMOS. All right. So that's why people find early fact here, and they see the same effect in CMOS, but it's being caused by a different reason. It's got channel length modulation. So that's why they also call the, you know, th this um, effect, early effect as well in CMOS. Remember what, what's the what's the reason for CLM? Do you remember that? Watch the video. Prepare for the quiz. Let's look at that. So let me write it down here. <clears throat> Review P injunctions. Was depletion region deplete depletion region <laughs> mm, body fact CLM anything else? IS, ID, those kind of things. Right. BB. All right. And yeah, there are three modes. Of operation for an NPN BJT as NPN BJT. The first one is called saturation, uh, which is this region. How you can bias the BJT into that region? So bias that BJT to make it operate in this region, right? So it is something like this. Uh, just terminals. That's E, that's C, that's B. That's a little VTH, which is VB. That's just a circuit model for the saturation BJT. And it has to have VB larger than... <coughs> VC, VB larger than VE. That's required to operate it in saturation region. And what about cutoff? So when it's going to be operating cutoff? It's open circuit. There's no current flow through it. Keep in mind. C, E, B. It's open. All right. So here's a symbol. And here's a model. Here's a symbol. But it's being cut off. There's no current flow through it. So in saturation region, VB is the largest. VB is larger than VC, larger than VE. VB is the largest voltage. If VB is the largest voltage, then it's in saturation. All right? Remember this. If VB is the smallest, it's operating cut off. Why? I understand this intuitively. Why? When VB is smallest, it's in cutoff. Think about the extreme case. When VB is zero, nothing. It's just not turning on the transistor. You need a little switch to turn on the base voltage a little bit to in order to turn on the channel. So it's, if the switch here is totally the lowest, zero, or you know tiny compared to VC and VE, then it's not being turned on, so it's open circuit. No current flows through the channel. And then active.
I draw a little current control current source here because the active mode is the most commonly used mode for this BGT. And the purpose of doing that is it's going to give you a little current gain. So whatever the B here, you have a VB or IB being inject, injected into the base. And IC will be beta times IB. And beta is normally 100. So got a huge current gain. Got a huge current gain here. That's the active mode, which require VC is the largest. And VB is in the middle of VC and VE. That's required to operate this guy in the active mode, which is not which is the, the most commonly used mode. Okay, and you can imagine that IB is injecting. So the NPN IB is getting here. And it's gonna give you a current gain, and so there will be IC getting to the C terminal, and they will merge together and form IE. According to KCL, IE equals to IB plus IC, and according to this current gain, IC equals to beta IB. It only happens when it's being operated in the active mode. All right, but not here, not here. All right, any questions? No, cover more next week. Okay, see you next week.